All right, everybody. I'm gonna go over my uh, typical camping list. Um, now, as always, this can change depending on you know what I'm doing. Um, sometimes I might carry more. Sometimes I might carry less. Uh, but this is fairly typical. The pack is a 511 Rush 24, um, acquired from Captain Bart. I really, really like this pack. This is a great pack. Um, I can't say enough good about it. I uh, love the color. It's got tons and tons of pockets, organization, um, tons of molly if I choose to add something. Um, you know, Velcro, lots of, lots of stuff to talk about. But it's not about the pack so much as it is uh, the contents. Now, maybe sometime I will do a, a review on this pack, but I want to get some more uh, dirt time from it and uh, before I use it. But right now, I'm totally digging this pack. Um, I can't say enough good about it. So, going over the outside, you can see a sheath here. I think I mentioned in my last video this is an SE laser strike uh, pouch. Right now I've got it out of here because I'm working on it. I'm doing a patina and uh, some sharpening and that kind of thing. Um, nothing on the other side. We'll go over the front pocket first. Uh, one thing I really like is double zipper. Um, just I like that. It's, it's a good feature of a pack. The inside has got a lot of organization, but one of the you know main things I carry is some bug dope. Now you can see the labels all messed up on this. This bottle leaked on me, and uh, I'll show you some other damage it did. So always carry your bug dope in a plastic bag because the I don't know what exactly it is that makes it do it, but it'll it'll mess some gear up. Um, this is a knockoff. You dig it, trowel. Um, I can use it for just about anything. Um, digging a cat hole to cleaning up a fire pit. Headlight, this is the uh, black diamond. Really like that headlight. Um, like I said before, this is the, uh, I think it's an Inova, but I don't remember the exact model, but I really like this flashlight. Leatherman Charge TTI good multi-tool in this pocket is my first aid kit and recently acquired and added to the first aid kit I had a pair of scissors in here because on my first aid kit video I said that I like to have the non-stick pads and cut them to size and that use that and you know some tape as my bandage well, I had some long scissors in here and they kept poking through. Um, they poked through in a couple places. I can't find the spot exactly right now, but um, well, right there, scissors poke through. So I acquired these today and added them to my kit. Um, little fold out scissors, you pull them apart. And uh, I'm not going to try it with one hand because I've already got a cut on my finger. But. Uh, great little scissors and they're not going to cut anything up because the blades are held inside two little thin pieces of metal and it houses the blades they don't cut nothing so that's a good little addition um, inside this pocket I have my GP4L radio because sometimes I like to listen to a radio usually on solos back pocket back here I have a brand new I haven't really I've only had this out in the field once it's a Brunt Adventure Racing Compass and I took the actual compass off because this is what got mixed up with that um, bug dope and it it melted the plastic that's not like goop on there that's melted it like goop you know melted the plastic all up so always keep your your bug dope in a bag so that's it for this pocket. Normally I have a magic marker in there, but it's out right now. Up here, I have an Altoids 10. This is my flint and steel kit. Nice flint or uh, Altoids 10. I have some um, 
uh, hemp rope. Inside this, this is my char cloth tin. Um, inside of here, I'm going to have trouble opening this thing with one hand. Is some lamp wick, and I charred it, and it's it's some of the best uh, char cloth material I've found. The next best to me, for me is jean material denim, um, but this is great. And if you want to try this, you can get on Ben's Backwoods, and for like seven bucks, you can buy 16 feet of the stuff in the uh, snowshoe section because they use the stuff for bindings. Um, so you can get a great uh, quantity of it. Also have a striker, piece of flint, some more um, char cloth. I think that's it for that pocket. Yep. Then I've got this other, these are butterfly pockets by the way, they don't go all the way through, they have seam. Uh, in here I have my sewing kit given to me by the professor. Um, I actually left it at Bart so one time I took it over to show him and uh, his dog got a hold of it, so I'm going to have to stitch that up. Um, an assortment of needles. Um, like I said, the professor made this for me. I added some more needles to it, um, but in here I have an assortment of threads. So another pair of those scissors. Um, some more, this is uh, the thread I use on all my, um, my nylon stuff, my tarps and that kind of thing. It's a really heavy duty thread. Uh, a plethora of uh, um, pins here and a couple buttons on there. Some more. This is uh, the leather or the um, artificial sinew I use on leather working, which I do have some leather working needles in there. And this is waxed nylon cord or waxed. Um, it's the same. It's a, it's a similar product to this. Um, but this is a waxed um, type of thread that I use on leather work. And you can get it at Tandy Leather. Um, in here, like I said, I do some leather work. So if I can get it out of there with one hand. My uh, little awl. This is actually a scratch awl. But this is just a little piece of rubber that... Um, it does have a hole in the end, but it doesn't slide up over this anymore. Um, but that used to be for um, a handle insert for a file. But it's a nice small awl, and it fits in here, so that's, I put it in here. And then the last thing is a seam ripper. Um, haven't had to use that yet, um, but I'm glad it's there. So I really appreciate this, because I've never had a good sewing kit before, so I appreciate the professor making that for me. Um, also in here, inside of here, I have a, a fire steel uh, ferro rod and some petroleum jelly cotton balls. That's it for that pouch. Um, sometimes I will have my BK9 strapped to the outside, but I don't right now. This thing is enormous. The compartments on this thing are enormous, and it's a complete fold-open bag. Um, right now I have some um, the professor's log cabin mix. This is a bannock mix um, because I need to do my bread challenge still or baking challenge uh, for his uh, cook-off type deal or cooking challenge. When I go out in the woods I really like to uh, you know right before I leave to come home I like to change my shirt because I just feel really grubby and stinky. Um, sometimes I'll wash up a little bit with some water um, but it makes me just feel like a brand new person to have a, a clean shirt on. Um, water bottle, it's empty right now, but um, the only reason I have it with me is because I do have a bladder in here, a three liter bladder. But uh, I brought this with me because uh, a lot of times I, I take uh, pre-measured things of Kool-Aid and uh, I have to have a bottle to mix it in. My Trangia stove, thank you noisemaker, with my homemade stand. You take the lid off, you put the stand on, you light the stove, and it's just enough to hold the pot up off of it. Um, I, it's completely full of alcohol right now. Um, I love the stove for that fact. I can carry my alcohol in the stove. I don't have to carry a separate bottle. 
Um, but instead of carrying the big stand that comes with it, I just made this little one out of hardware cloth. Works great. Um, this is my um, corn boiler. Or, um, it's got, you know, I think I just showed that in one of my videos. Um, cast iron skillet. I, I know I've talked to some people that said, you know, why carry a cast iron skillet? You can get a light, much lighter one. There's just something about using cast iron. You can't beat it. It's a great piece of kit, and when it's well seasoned, it's non-stick, so you ain't got to worry about it. And plus, it's really not that heavy. This is probably about a pound, maybe a little bit more, but it's not breaking my back, so I don't worry about it. Uh, this is a plate. I found this very useful. It's uh, out of an old Boy Scout cook kit, just aluminum plate, and it's very handy when you're out in the woods and you eat some bush meals to uh, have something to throw it in. It's fairly shallow. And the nice thing about it, if my camera will focus, there we go, is that my skillet sets right inside of it and it's not much, you know, thicker, so it doesn't take up much room. Bandana, everybody's got to have a bandana. Um, then I have this contraption. I learned this from uh, Raven Lore Bushcraft and his name is um, Wayland. And basically, I'm going to replace this. This is an arrow shaft, by the way. This is a carbon one. I'm going to replace it as soon as I get a chance to find me an aluminum one. Um, basically, this is called a blow poker. It you, you can use it to get right down in there and blow on the coals without getting clear down on the ground. Um, and yet, if you have the aluminum one, you can still move stuff around inside the fire. Now, these rings on the end, this is something I also learned from uh, Waylon, is that... Inside of here, one hand is four of these metal skewers. They got a ring on one end, and they're about a foot, maybe a foot and a half long, and they're sharpened on the other end. Now we like to cook steak over the fire when we go out. So what I thought we could do, instead of messing around with sticks, is take one of these, drive it in the dirt, you know, drive one on the other side of the fire and then take and put one through the one loop feed our steak onto this rod here and then like I said I'm doing this with one hand but it would be a lot easier with two something like that where you know you could have your shish kebab over the fire and cook your steak that away or another thing I found is if you put them one through one like that and when you bring them up here you have to stick a stick down through the top of this one and down through this one and it will hold it about like that so you could, get, you could cook your steak like that too so it's a very handy thing to have um, plus I've got my blow tube which is completely hollow you're not going to see through that but that way you can blow on the fire also in here I have and I've learned a lot of this stuff um, the tips and tricks like uh, you know having um, well, a lot of this stuff is from Captain Bart um, having a skillet having a plate and a lot of it's from the professor too they're both uh, really really organized when it comes to this kind of stuff but uh, in here in this mesh pocket I have my brew kit and I've added a couple additions to this guy too in here I've added garlic powder <coughs> Lowry season salt um, I've got my reg my regular salt and I've also I haven't got a little bottle like that yet for it yet but uh, this is powdered butter and it, it it's really tastes just like butter and it says it's made with real butter um, but we like to cook but you know boiled potatoes on the fire and stuff like that well you know you can't carry regular butter with you without it going bad or without it melting or anything like that so this will be perfect for uh, our baked potatoes in that so that's another nice little addition another addition I picked up from the professor is having a little scrubby pad with you and it makes easy cleanup for when I make uh, whatever I'm making in my skillet or whatever. It's a, one of those plastic scratcher pads. 
I put it in the baggie so that you know when I'm done I can throw the wet sponge back in there and it's fine. Um, I also need another vial because I'm going to put a little bit of this Dawn in one of those vials and that will give me plenty to wash up with. Um, also have three gallon size zippy bags, three quart zippy bags, and three sandwich size zippy, zippy bags. Uh, because I found from Captain Bart the zippy bags have a million and one uses. You can't you can't find enough uses for these things. I mean they're just tons of uses. In this pocket I have all my cordage. This is all my tarp guy lines and uh, all that stuff. Um, I'm gonna make a, um, a stuff sack for them so that they'll stay organized and my tent stakes and that kind of thing. Um, also in here I have my, even though I've got a knife on the outside here, I got my Woodlore clone with me, uh, my Jap Woodlore clone. Then I've got two homemade, these are bags I made, um, they're uh, called Black Bishop bags because they open at both ends. I don't know exactly why they call them Bishop bags, but they open at both ends. This one is my hammock, that one is my tarp, and it's they're just very convenient to keep everything nice and compact. And with this bag has this um, organizer pocket here, and that keeps these two things from falling out. Uh, I also have a, a zippered compartment back there. I have a, a real nice padded pocket that I can get to from the top. It's mainly for sunglasses. Uh, my water bladder tube comes out from the pocket behind this, and comes out these ports right here. Um, so that's really handy. So uh, I've got everything. This is mainly my main kit. It's a little bit bulky, but it's not super heavy. I'm guessing maybe 10, 15 pounds at the most. Um, but uh, like I said, I still need a drop or a bottle for my soap. I still need a bottle for my butter. And uh, then I think I'll probably be pretty well set. Um, I'm gonna have to order a new compass from Captain Bart because this one's pretty well shot. It it's screwed. I mean, it'll still work, but it screwed all the readings up on it and everything else. Um, but this this it didn't screw this up. This is gonna be my my um, ex but really that's awesome button compass. My kit, like I said, normally I wouldn't carry this with me, but I'm doing my baking challenge. Um, and so you know, and then we always carry our food in a in a grocery bag so that's my kit guys if you got any comments or questions or want to see more on something I'd be glad to do it um, oh one other thing in here I have a little um, name badge container and it's got some uh, bright orange flagging tape about 20 feet of it it's got a better compass in there that's a silva I've also got a signal mirror in there and a survival whistle so that's my signaling compartment and uh, so that's in there too um, so and like I said if you got any comments questions suggestions anything like that I'm happy with that um, but like I said this is what I like to carry this is this is what works for me doesn't mean it's gonna work for you so you know I also carry my axe um, sometimes I'll carry an axe sometimes I'll carry a big knife and then my buck saw um, but those are in my truck right now. Um, I'm in the process of making a new comp new um, pocket for those. But uh, anyway, guys, let me know what you think. And uh, as always, thank you for watching.